Let's recap. When we apply matrix vector multiplication to a vector on a two-dimensional plane, the vector undergoes a shift, resulting in new coordinates as the coordinate space adjusts or twists. With this interpretation of matrix vector multiplication, we can now understand matrices from various perspectives. For example, let's take a rotation matrix. Suppose we have vector A positioned at coordinates 2, 0. If we rotate vector A 90 degrees counterclockwise, we obtain a new vector at coordinates 0, 2, which we'll denote as vector B. Let's consider this rotation of a vector as a form of matrix vector multiplication. We performed matrix vector multiplication on an unknown matrix with the vector 2, 0, resulting in a shift of the vector's coordinates to 0, 2. Any guesses on what this matrix might be? As mentioned earlier, 2, 0 represents the coordinates of a vector in an adjusted coordinate space, while 0, 2 represents the original coordinates of the same vector in the initial coordinate space. How could we adjust the axis of the plane so that the coordinates 0, 2 correspond to 2, 0? One approach could be to designate the vertical axis as the x-axis and the horizontal axis as the y-axis. Consequently, the x-value of the vector would be 2 and the y-value would be 0. Thus, in this new coordinate system, the vector's coordinates would be 2, 0, whereas in the original coordinate system, they would be 0, 2. So, the vectors in the unknown matrix serve as new axes that are rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. How can we express this 90-degree rotation in a matrix? Let's consider the values 0, 1, negative 1, and 0 as potential entries for the matrix. Let's denote these vectors as A and B. The coordinates of vector A are 0, 1, while the coordinates of vector B are negative 1 and 0. That's what vectors A and B look like. Given that vectors within a matrix are treated as the new axes of a two-dimensional plane, the matrix comprised of these two vectors, A and B, rotates the coordinate space or plane by 90 degrees counterclockwise. This matrix is commonly referred to as a rotation matrix. A rotation matrix is a good example that directly demonstrates how the coordinate space undergoes a transformation. From now on, we are going to explore the multiplication between two matrices instead of a matrix and a vector. Let's see what happens when we multiply two matrices. Let's consider multiplying two matrices A and B along with a vector X. Once again, A and B are matrices and X is a vector. We'll begin by multiplying matrix B by vector X resulting in a new vector. Then, we'll multiply matrix A by the product of matrix B and vector X, ultimately yielding another vector. To summarize, we initially had vector X, which we then multiplied by matrix B. Next, we multiplied matrix A by the product of matrix B and vector X. Let's approach this process conceptually. When we multiply matrix B by vector X, we tilt the initial coordinate space. Subsequently, by multiplying the resulting product by matrix A, we tilt the already tilted coordinate space once more. Now, let's explore matrix multiplication with BA instead of AB. First, we multiply matrix A by vector X. Then, we multiply matrix B by the resulting product of matrix A and vector X. So, does the order of matrices in matrix multiplication matter? Yes, 
because AB initially transformed the coordinate space with matrix B first, whereas BA transforms the coordinate space with matrix A first. Hence, the order of matrices in matrix multiplication is significant. For instance, rotating the coordinate space before flipping it could yield different coordinates compared to flipping it first and then rotating it. Once more, like general multiplication involving natural numbers, the order of matrices in matrix multiplication can yield different results. Therefore, I want to emphasize that AB is not equal to BA and AB minus BA does not always equal zero. As explained, the reason why the product of matrices varies depending on the order of matrices can be understood by the examining the order of transformations applied to the coordinate space. If you have prior experience with linear algebra, you might recognize some of these terms on the board. Let A be a 2x2 two two matrix with values A, B, C, and D. The transpose of matrix A is obtained by interchanging its rows and columns. Initially, we wrote vectors in the matrix vertically. However, in a transpose matrix, vectors are written horizontally, with each row of the matrix becoming a vector. If matrix A is equal to its transpose, we refer to the matrix as a symmetric matrix. It's important to note that the symmetric matrices always have an equal number of rows and columns. On the other hand, if the transpose of matrix A is equal to its negative, we refer to the matrix as a skew symmetric matrix. A diagonal matrix is a square matrix where all elements outside the main diagonal are zero. The main diagonal of a matrix consists of the elements where the row index equals the column index. A triangular matrix is a special type of square matrix where all the entries above or below the main diagonal are zero. Depending on whether the non-zero entries are above or below the main diagonal, we classify triangular matrices into two types, upper triangular matrices and lower triangular matrices. So far, we've learned that the multiplication between a matrix and a vector results in a transformation of a coordinate space and we will apply this concept to understand the fundamental principles of neural networks. Let's delve into the basic structure of neural networks. Initially, we have data, which serves as an input, and this data passed through a hidden layer before ultimately being returned as output. Let's denote the data as x, the weights and bias in the hidden layer as w and b, and finally, the output as y hat. Then, the output y hat is determined by the activation function sigma applied to wx plus b. Let's explore how multiplication between a matrix and a vector operates within this process. Let's say the data x is a vector in Rn. The weights and bias in the hidden layer also have their own dimensions. Consider that the weights take the form of a matrix. Suppose the output y hat is a vector in Rm. Since the dimensions of y hat and x are m and n respectively, the weights w must be a m by n matrix, and the bias must be a vector in Rm. To clarify, w is an m by n matrix, and b is a vector in Rm. The first letter here is m. Suppose the data x is an image, and the output y hat is a list of labels of the image. In this case, n is much larger than m. Let's revisit the equation from the previous slide. y hat equals sigma wx plus b. The length of vector x is very long since its dimension is n by 1. On the other hand, the vector y hat is shorter compared to x with its dimension being n by 1. 
Meanwhile, W is on M by N matrix, and B is also a vector in Rm, specifically M by 1 vector. In the equation, we begin with vector x in Rn. Initially, we multiply an M by N matrix W by vector x. Do you remember what it means to multiply a matrix by a vector? The matrix vector multiplication transforms the original coordinate space. Up to now, we are only familiar with transformations of a coordinate space by square matrices such as a 2 by 2 matrix. However, in our equation, the number of rows and columns of weights W are different. The dimension of the input is n by 1, while the dimension of the output is m by 1, indicating that the information in the input has been compressed to lower dimensional data. In other words, the input x exists in a high dimensional space, while the output exists in a lower dimensional space. Thus, the weights matrix W not only distorts the original coordinate space, but also reduces its dimensionality. Stated differently, you can also decrease the dimensionality of a space through a matrix vector multiplication when the number of columns of the matrix is larger than the number of rows. Now, let's discuss why we need an activation function in neural networks. Transforming a coordinate space, such as rotating and resizing, are all linear transformations. However, Sometimes we need to introduce curvature or remove linearity from the axis in the space to extract meaningful information from the data. That's why we apply an activation function to the product of weights and data. Some of the most popular activation functions include sigmoid, ReLU, or hyperbolic tangent functions. These functions introduce nonlinearity to the space. So the fundamental concept of neural networks is to extract essential dimensions from the data by distorting and reducing the dimensions of a coordinate space. The objective of training neural networks is to find weights W and bias B that enable us to transform a coordinate space and reduce dimensions until we obtain crucial information from the data.